What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York calling from Zoom again. And this time we are here with Snake of the Almighty Voivod. Great to be able to talk with you. Thanks for being here. Hey, hi. How's it going? <laughs> it's going good, man. How's it going with you? Uh, pretty good. Pretty uh, pretty busy, actually. Uh, you know, we're going to be on tour uh, uh, pretty soon, uh, two weeks from now. And, um, you know, it's, it's everything getting compressed. Uh, and uh yeah time while uh, you know getting setting yeah uh, i know i remember interviewing I, i'm sure i think it was with you i interviewed you like at the very beginning of lockdown like in march of april of 2020 and we were like so unsure when touring was going to happen but now you guys are busy and you're hitting the ground running because you just released synchro anarchy this year which is absolutely awesome and now we got this ultraman ep out is this Ultraman EP coming in November? Is this kind of like at all like a sort of a continuation of Synchro Anarchy in a way, or is this EP kind of like its one-off own little experiment? Well, I think both of it, uh, both of both of that. It's just uh, we we've been recording um, Ultraman in the same kind of session, the same kind of period of time that we were in a uh, in studio for uh, Synchro Anarchy. And we've been recording the music, uh, and then uh, we put it aside for a while, and then we intensively worked on synchro anarchy for four months, like nonstop. <laughs> and then afterwards, when the tornado was gone, we uh, we went back to it and did the, the vocal, uh, uh, which is in French, Japanese, and English, and. Uh, uh, our guitar player too is good in Japan, Japanese, pretty good. And uh, so we managed to do uh, the three language, and um, but it wasn't a, it was it was not an easy task because because of the um, publishing. Um, but um, uh, it's the same composer, but it was uh, with different uh, because there's a. There's a team, uh, the opening team, and then the battle team, and different team in music. It was the same composer, but different publishing, and it was a bit complex to deal with that. But uh, we managed to have uh, an agreement, and then uh, we were able to release it. And uh, it's great. It's the same uh, same kind of idea that we did in the past with Batman. And, uh, and captain scarlet whatever it's just like childhood memories kind of thing yeah well yeah. well you have like i would say that voivod has just as many eps as you do albums out between like the silver machine ep and you have uh like the post society ep and a lot of other uh sort of different eps are they almost kind of like fundamentally secular aspects of the voivod catalog i've always said that eps are kind of like uh the side adventure of a band because EPs are bands are allowed to, you know, let's throw a live track on there. Let's, you know, do a experimental element on there. Do EPs kind of allow Voivod to go off a little bit more? Yeah, that's, that's exactly the purpose of it. It's just, uh, it's something a little bit, the side of what, you know, what we do on in studio, uh, we do it for fun. We do it with another, um, expectation. You know, we do, we do it as, um, kind of a side thing in a sense, but it's, you know, we want to release stuff that it's cool, you know, and that maybe, maybe the youngster doesn't know much about Ultraman, but, uh, in my childhood, uh, it was a big thing. Uh, uh I was actually scared when, <laughs> when the intro was starting and, uh, as a kid and, um, and so, those things stick in your mind and uh and the music you know it seems to be like a little rock and roll thing but it's really kind of complex when you hear the instrumentation the instrumentation and uh, the way they compose it, it, uh, it, it it's it's not easy to do it's it's uh, it's more complex than it sounds like it's just uh and uh so it, it is always a kind of challenge to uh, realize that, you know, and uh, and to make it sound good and up to date and uh, kind of like uh, something a little bit uh, aside and odd for the for the fan, 
and uh, we always mix it with different things like live shows or live performance so uh, it's good for the collector it's good for the the diehard fan as well definitely so, definitely because and and voivod has like you know uh the most one of the most diehard fan bases i've ever met and you know there's always that one fan who like wants that one deep cut from like a split that you did like before a war in pain came out or something like that so <laughs> yeah. you know there's always uh there's always like that yeah. one, one deep cut guy like I, I i'd imagine that uh you have people asking to play the to the death demo or something like that yeah, yeah, yeah. So there, there, there's a few things out there that I don't even recall. I don't even know what they're talking about. <laughs> it's like, what? Yeah, right. Yeah. A lot of bootleg back in the days that were like uh, circulating. Yeah. And so it ended up on. I've seen, uh, I've seen big plates, you know, like big vinyl about that tick, you know, <laughs> made in Russia with demos that we did and at the very beginning of the band so and as yeah. fu- and as fucked up as it sounds those bootlegs are probably worth like hundreds or something like that some of those things. yeah yeah, so yeah that's like yeah, the sick joke rare. of it yeah <laughs> when it comes to a writing whether it be for an ep or a full-length album is there always like a preconceived vision at you kind of mentioned this in a way with the ultraman ep kind of like having you know your own memories and like your own experiences incorporated in there but like do you have like a preconceived vision of what the sound is like or do you is there like a lot of um improvising in your songwriting process because when you like compare war and pain to killing technology to nothing face to synchro anarchy it almost seems like every album has its things that make it stand out a little bit well, yeah especially with voivod i think we never did the same album twice and uh, you know some bands sometimes they they stick with a winning formula and you know they just kind of like stay in the same area and an album after album but we have we always had a different approach we um, we try to capture what's 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 inside of us and try to release it as as it is because everything is different and with the, um, it's comparable with time too you know the, the different time and different uh, circumstances brings uh, brings other things you know to the to the work I think uh, and um, like like the wake album which was really you know, uh, well received around the world, and uh, and and so the the level was already really high uh, to to top that, and it's it's uh, but we had a different attitude because of maybe the pandemic was part of it because we were kind of like separate from each other for so long, and we were trading tapes and and then files to get things going, but it was really hard to get the vibe going for a long time. And we were like, we wanted to deliver something, but we couldn't uh, get together in the same place. And so so we kept exchanging file. And then when there was a bit of a release of uh, the restriction, we were able to do the, to do the streaming uh, live things. And um, it, for us, it was the first experience, but we, we kind of like really enjoyed it because when we were listening to the these uh, streaming session, we uh, we figured that we we were sounded pretty good just the four of us in one room, you know, no artificial, you know, no layers of guitar, multi layers of guitars, no more layers of vocal, just the four of us in the room sounded bright in the face but really good you know so we kind of approach synchro anarchy the same way not too much artificial stuff in it Mm -hmm. um pretty pretty much straightforward but the music and then you know the more than effects and we didn't put intros before the songs we didn't put that stuff it was more like um it was almost like a punk kind of attitude that we delivered you know we just delivered for four months bang 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 and creating and it was such a killer session that like uh 
It was so intense that I don't think I'll be able to do that again. <laughs> this is, my brain was about to, my brain was steaming, uh, writing lyrics and trying stuff. And we had no chance really to sit down and think about it and listen to it. And, you know, it was more like a, you can feel the emergency of it too, you know, and uh, the whole aspect of the pandemic and whatever, it's, it was weird, but came out good. Well, for songwriting, uh, this is like the new question I'd like to ask uh, bands now. Is it better when you're songwriting if you, Chewy, Away, and Rocky are all like on the same page or, and are feeling the same way and are in the same frame of mind? Or could like different emotions and you guys feeling different things and experiencing different things maybe help, you know, the songwriting process and bring in a lot of that uh, dichotomy and duality? Well, basically... We all have our different experience during the day. And uh, what I'm trying to do sometimes is take notes or record myself on the phone or if I have an idea or something. But it's really when, uh, when we see each other that we communicate as, you know, the same way we talk, we talk with instruments. And then and, um, being sitting in a room sometimes, uh, you know, there's, there's stuff that comes out that's it's out of nowhere and it, it's what brings it I don't know but it's like oh my god yeah yeah just that that I like it you know and then we build up on things and we it's it's like uh it's like hockey you know we, we we pass the puck you know we pass the puck to the other one and then the other one brings something else and then oh that could be a good melody oh that could be a good riff that could be a good beat for that and it's just an exchange of ideas basically it started like that and then we evaluate more when we have stuff uh recording recorded uh and then uh, from that point on you know the song kind of like takes take his own way there and uh, because music is really special it's 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 a form of art that you know very unique because it it doesn't exist, and then it's out there. <laughs> music, music is just, it's it's something that's out there, and then with the four brains, you know, we connect, and then it it, it creates something, and it's just it's amazing sometimes. Well, you led me perfectly into the next question, actually, because I've always said that Voivod's music, you know, there's there's something fa there's always like a fantasy element behind it but it's also very very relatable too when we look at the sort of macabre or you know nature of humanity in a way i feel like you know you you are the soundtrack to both the greatest and most evil aspects of humanity in a way how we overcome things but how we also succumb to things as well and yeah. i've always said that art is life and when you bring it into the world it can grow and it can develop as you grow as an artist do you think that the meaning of your music could also evolve over time? Or do you prefer if every Voivod album is more or less like a snapshot of who you are at that particular time? Well, I would say that. I would say that, you know, like killing technology was a period of time and back in the days that, you know, um, there, were, there was a lot of oppression around the world. And we're, we were born with the fear of a nuclear war, you know, and uh, and I remember seeing these docs when I was young uh, about, you know, uh, about being so close for, you know, self-destruction or humanity and stuff like that. So you, we felt like there was a, was something to talk about, you know, and, uh, and, and nuclear power plant and that is leaking and whatever and really fragile planet and whatever. It was a uh, back in the days we, we were trying to kind of like put not to scare people but to to make them realize how how fragile the whole thing is you know and um and we can go in a split second boom you know we're all gone and that was that was the moment that was back in the days that was our thinking but every album is like that. But the music itself, I think, can evolve, you know, um, and, 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 and transcend decades and, and still be revealed for the people 
never been in contact with those old albums and 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 made their own way uh, and for them it could be it could be sounding as new as a new album you know so it's like there's a, there's a lot of people the youngster they they discover the band as well sometimes and they they flip out on the mansion atras or on old album uh as much as the new album and so uh, it evolves with the time but it's a, like like you said it's like a snapshot yeah when it was made you know so yeah i was one of the younger fans like the first voivod album i actually ever listened to was your self-titled one from 2003 which crazy enough it's going to be 20 years old next year which is crazy to think but yeah. like I, I wanted to talk about that too because you have like a diverse fan base in terms of generations you have older fans who've been following you since the war and pain days and people who are just discovering you now with synchro anarchy but you've also played with a variety of different bands too i've seen you play with yob and i've also seen you play with revocation you know like doom bands you know um more death metal bands you kind of go all over the spectrum with who you've toured with i think it's fair to say that voivod has played in front of many different audiences what right oh yeah i mean playing with napalm death who played with guar <laughs> played with but it's fun to see the, 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 the diversity of of style and the crossover and uh and uh you know it's always fun to be uh be part of this scene and that giant bubble of of whatever music metal uh, whatever you want to call it it's just everybody's doing their own thing and um uh, and um uh, so you could be a creator fan forever and and then oh i've never heard you know never really put a focus on that band called voivod and then they're, they're gonna do it and then uh they, they might join join the gang and jump in the, the wagon yeah and uh that's 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 the great part of it you know? yep and the final question i wanted to ask you is for you uh going back to your songwriting process whether whether this would be for uh the music itself or lyrics you know obviously with this ultraman ep you know again this is going back to childhood memories and you know you're looking into the past but i think it's fair to say with how well the lyrics aged in killing technology there's plenty of looking into the future as well <laughs> um but is is it fair to say that you take sources of inspiration both internally and externally and do you almost have to like go to a certain place or be in a certain frame of mind in order to collect ideas or does inspiration just strike out of the blue kind of like two questions in one well it's if uh, inspiration can be you can be sitting in your car and then you know sometimes i work your, your brain never stop right so you work on a song and you're like uh don't know exactly where it's gonna go you have a few line here and there it's like it, it doesn't it takes time to but uh it's still there you know you, your brain's working on it without thinking about it it's just like sometimes it stick there you know it's there and you've been working on it but unfortunately there's something that bugs you or you don't know how to put it together and then you can be driving your car one afternoon and oh yeah yeah i got it i got it i know how to put it times. i know how i know how to figure it out you know like uh this this will be the whatever the the verses and then that would be the chords you know and then oh okay it's a puzzle thing and uh basically and um but of course there's a lot of things that inspire you and uh, i would say indirectly you could be inspired by stuff that you see a movie a documentary uh, something that you see on internet but something that that kind of capture your uh your imagination you just and, and once again you park it there and once again you might use it later with something that's going to pop out with the same area or the same uh, subject yeah. well, let's say that uh, yeah that's one of the most beautiful things i've always said about the internet obviously the internet's a very toxic and negative place sometimes but i think one of the most amazing things about the internet is how much art we are exposed to it's very yeah. easy sometimes it can make us a little jaded but 
there's always inspiration. Like, you don't have to, if I want to look, you don't have to be in Paris if you want to see the Mona Lisa, you know what I mean? You don't have to, yeah, yeah. yeah like, you could see yeah, everything. Yeah, it's a, the, the new video that we just released, Quest for Nothing, is absolutely mind-blowing, and it's made by artificial intelligence, and, and it's like, it's, it's, a, it's a new technology that is there, and I guess people, you know, there will be more of that kind you know because you punch and you give the computer stuff a lot of stuff and then you push start and it it creates the whole thing it's it's like it, i don't know if you saw it but check this out the uh, quest for nothing uh i was i was my mind was a, a friend of mine said my brain is like mush potato <laughs> well i mean <laughs> The, the I, I saw it and one of the and I'm I think they meant it as a compliment because having that AI effect to it my favorite comment somebody wrote is did Elon Musk direct this video <laughs> yeah so but it's insane it's like imagination from a computer you know you you give him subject or whatever and it goes and that's creation by itself it's just amazing you know yeah. and uh so we're at that point now. <laughs> you know, like it or not, that's that's uh, it's it's kind of scary and uh, <laughs> but uh, but it's amazing at the same time. Yeah, you know, we're the only we are the only creatures that have the ability to entertain ourselves in a complex way. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. So before we go, I want to thank you so much for your time. It's great to be able to talk with you again and in video too. Um, I remember when I first interviewed you, I didn't even have a computer that could take zoom yet speaking of ai and i had to have my yeah, phone yeah. i had to have my phone on speakerphone and was recording it with my camcorder yeah, yeah, yeah. um but uh before we go is there just anything else that you would like uh to promote with the release of ultraman and you're also well into the record cycle for synchro anarchy uh what else could we be expecting for voivod in 2023 yeah well we're gonna, we're gonna go on tour in two weeks uh so people in europe uh, uh we're gonna be with opet uh, from uh, uh, December, uh, November 10 uh, to November 26, and we're going to do a few more shows on our own. Um, that's we're going to go to Italy, uh, Istanbul as well. So, uh, yeah, and Greece. So, uh, for those people you want to watch us uh, live, uh, you're welcome. You're more than welcome uh, to come to see us and. Uh, yeah. keep update with the with Voivod. We're always working on something different, and uh, so there's more to come. That's for sure. Hell yeah! <laughs> Looking forward to all of it. Thank you so much, everybody. We are here with Voivod. Be sure to check out the Ultraman EP coming out this November. Check out their latest full length album, Synchro Anarchy, and be on the lookout for new more stuff coming very soon. We'll see you next time, everybody. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>